Hello, everybody. So there are three things that are going to make our characters feel alive in VR or in first-person games in general. They are the eyes, the face, and body language. In order to do those, we're going to need to use inverse kinematics and blend keys, or blend shapes. Don't worry about it too much. It's not as complicated as it sounds. The real issue with them is that they are kind of arcane. It's hard to look up help on them unless you already know all the keywords you need to know. And not very helpful, right? So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of minutes to talk about how to do animations, how to create an animator, and also how to turn on IK and use it. Next time we'll talk about eyeballs. <laughs> so what we've done is we've exported a MakeHuman model with the Unity rig attached to it. And you can find that in the last episode. And this is what it looks like when we bring it into Blender. It's a pretty straightforward situation, but this has no animations attached to it by default, which means that when we put it into Unity, it's not going to be able to animate it. And that means it's not going to be able to do, to do IK on it, and that means that it's not going to be able to do anything with blinking or whatever. So we're going to want to put in an animation. Now, creating animations, uh, I recommend you do it in Blender rather than in Unity. Um, technically speaking, we're probably going to be creating animations in both, but Blender has this really easy feature where you can just grab bones and rotate them, where in Unity you have to like pick them out of a big list and it's really a pain in the butt. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. I'm going to presume you aren't very familiar with Blender. You can grab these little little teeny uh, stripes, diagonal stripes, in the corner of the screen and drag them to get a second window. If you don't like the windows, you right click on the edge and hit join and you can pick which one joins with which. See? Now what we're going to do in this bottom window is we're going to, put, we're going to pick out the dope sheet. The dope sheet allows us to perform animations, but the thing about the dope sheet is that it's by default configured to animate one thing at a time. And what we actually want to do is animate an action. So we're going to switch from the dope sheet to the action editor. Now you can't pick the action editor from this drop down. You have to pick the, to pick the dope sheet and then pick the action editor. You can see that I already have an animation in place. And the way I did this, I'll just go ahead and delete it and do it again. So the way I did it is I simply made sure that I was at uh, frame one. like so. And then I picked all of the bones I wanted to have in my neutral pose and just moved them. Uh, this is very, very basic stuff. It's super, super basic animation and I'm not trying to do anything cool here. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm technically not even creating an animation. The animation is only one frame long. What I am trying to do is I'm trying to create a basis for, um, for the, uh, the game to use for IK. Later on we'll add actual animations, but for now I just want my character to actually exist in the game world as something that can be animated. So all I have to do is create one animation. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, doesn't matter how long or short it is, this will do fine. So just so you're aware, if you're animating you're generally going to want to be in orthogonal mode rather than perspective mode, and you can flick that with 5 on the numpad. And the reason for that is because otherwise uh, you get skewing based on how far your camera is left or right and stuff like that. It's a pain in the butt. Either way, uh, you can hit A to select all bones. And just hit it over and over until you get all the bones because it sometimes deselects all. And then you can hit I and you can ask it what, you can tell it what you want to save. Now you could just save the bones you changed. Generally speaking, I find that that's um, annoying because you have to like remember which bones you changed and if you forget to add one to the list you get screwed up. So I just pick all bones. But I don't do the whole character. This is something I see a lot of people doing. The problem with this is it will save the scales of your bones. And if you want to do mechanism re-rigging, if you want to have like two characters that are shaped slightly differently but use the same animations, if you have scale saved on your animations, the bones will stretch and your character will look like a horrifying nightmare. So only save the rotation. There, that's done. Now when you are creating your action, you're going to have the option down here to name it. So you should name it whatever you want. I've already got an action, so I'm not actually going to do it twice here. 
Um, but what you're going to want to do if you want to save it, you absolutely have to remember to hit F. If you don't hit F, then it won't save. Uh, it, it'll save like once, but then when you start to create a new animation, it'll forget that this, this first animation mattered. It'll just delete it. It'll garbage collect it, and you'll never see it again. So absolutely remember to hit F, this button here. Otherwise, you'll be sorry. So I actually did destroy my idle animation, and just because it's already named, I'm going to go ahead and stick this in there. And we'll go back over to this one and turn it off. There we go. And then you hit save. No biggie. So we're going to pop back over into Unity here, and we're going to just finish up setting our character for animations. Now I've already done it, but I'll go through all the steps for you. So this is our character. I dragged him into the game world. Um, let's go ahead and select him in our project view. We have a lot of options here. If you're doing this with, from Make Human with normal uh, options, you'll want to multiply the scale. You want to bring it down to 0.1 because by default it's in like um, decameters or something. It's it's a little bit odd, but it's fine. It scales no problem. Uh, over here in Rig, you're going to want to be in a humanoid rig because that's Mechanim compatible stuff. And if you have a plan to use animations from anyone else, you're going to want to be in Mechanim standard. Good news, the bones automatically know where to go. You don't have to do anything else. Just uh, hit apply and it will automatically figure all that stuff out for you. Over here in animations, we can import whatever animations we would like. And you can see that I've imported my idle one animation, one frame. It auto detects that it's only one frame. I wouldn't worry about the default take animation. You can delete it or not, whatever. Uh, but one of the things you might want to note is loop time and loop pose are here. Now if you create an animation in Unity, you can click on the animation and you'll get the option to change the looping. But in this, you actually have to change it here on the import settings. So definitely go ahead and use those. Uh, now I'm not going to teach you how to do a lot of complicated animations or walk cycles or anything, but it's good to know the basics of this and be able to at least put your character into a vaguely relaxed pose without any trouble. Later on we will create a lot of specific animations like punching buttons on on these uh, uh, on these arcade machines and stuff like that. Don't worry too much about it. As long as all those settings are correct, you'll be able to create a new animator. Uh, you can create an animator by hitting right click create animator the animation it's called an animator controller here but this is the only place it's called an animator controller it's called an animator everywhere else um, but you can just create one and drop it into your character if it doesn't get automatically created it's very straightforward and once that happens you can go into the animator tab if you don't have an animator tab it's quite easy to add uh, that's actually the animation tab not the animator tab Hmm. You might have to double click on it. Uh, I don't remember how I got this now that I'm thinking about it. There's definitely a way to get it. I just don't happen to remember it off the top of my hand. Uh, top, of, top of my head here. Ah, oh, there it is. It's under Window. I don't know why there's no shortcut for it. But you go to Window, you click Animator, you'll get an Animator window. This is the Mechanim window. You'll get very used to it over time. Now, in order to actually use the Mechanim window, you're going to want to unfold your uh, your blender file and you can drag animations in like so see now keep in mind not everything is in uh, not everything down here is an animation I can't drag in my teeth or my tongue I can only drag in the animations which have the little play mode buttons uh, you can make them a default by clicking this button here so in this case I've just added idle I'll do it I'll do it for you here I've gone bam and then it automatically sets it up as the default so I don't even have to click it and set, set as default. If you want to know how to change states and stuff, we'll get into that a lot later, but not now. So what else do we need in order to get going? Well, we need to turn on IK Pass. By default, this is turned off. So you turn it on. Uh, this will allow us to create a script to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to looking natural. What we're going to start with is a very simple head script uh, where we're going to just have the player's head tilt towards uh, sorry, the character's head tilt towards the player. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that right now. You don't have to worry about the various things I've imported. Those, uh, those will become obvious in the long run. So let's create a new folder called scripts. 
and create a new C sharp script, which we will call attention controller. Sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and drag it onto the person. Make sure that it's on the same place as the animator. And let's open it up in our editor of choice. Since we're always going to need to have uh, an animator, let's go ahead and add in the require type of. That'll keep us from accidentally screwing this up later. And uh, also, I can't remember whether animator is um, still a direct access or not, so I just do it myself. And when I create that, what I can do is go down and make this into a wake. A wake happens before start. So I generally prefer a wake for setting up my objects and start for figuring out where they are in the world. So a wake, I'll just say anim equals get component animator. Now, to be honest, we don't even need to do that, but we will need it later. Um, it's good to keep track of this sort of thing. Uh, and then we, what we want to do is we want to have the IK pass function. So I believe that is on IK pass, but let me just go ahead and double check that. Unity on IK pass. Um, no. Unity IK. See, even I don't remember how to do it, and it's uh, on animator IK. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's the sort of thing, you, you, it's hard to look up. Um, even if you know what it's supposed to be, it's a magic word. Uh, who can remember that shit, right? So you can just remember that this video has it, or you can go find it online and bookmark the animator spot uh, in, the, in the code documentation, whatever. Anyway, here we're going to go ahead and set up our, um, our look stuff. So I guess we did need the animator right away. I don't know what I was talking about earlier. Sorry if I'm confusing you. No wasted code here yet. <laughs> so we're going to set the look at weight to 0.8. 1 is always look dead on, and 0 is don't look at all, and 0.8 is like look 80%. It'll override the default animation 80%, which means it will have a fairly strong correlation. Now the reason it's only 0.8 is because later on we'll animate the eyes, and generally speaking, if someone is looking at you and they're and you're like off to the side, they're not going to turn their head all the way over their shoulder like some kind of zombie. Uh, no, no. So we're also going to want to set the look position. Anim uh, set look position, but we don't have a position to to look at yet. So what we're going to want to do is add in a transform player eyeballs, and then down here we can say player eyeballs dot position. Sounds easy enough, right? So we have to tell it what our player eyeballs are. Now since I've already gone ahead and put together a scene, I already have some player eyeballs that are right here. I'll just drop them right in. Um, and we don't have to define the animator because it finds itself automatically during the awake phase. Hit play. Grind, grind, grind. Grind. This is not a complicated scene, Unity. I just rebooted my computer. Ah, ah, ah. So there are a couple of cool things about this. The first is that it won't try and break his neck around like uh, um, like he's possessed by the devil or whatever. Uh, it will try and keep him to relatively decent uh, angles. Also, it doesn't just spin his head around like a top. It will slightly tilt it, as you can see here. Um, and that will give it a little bit more realism. Later on, we'll probably want to do that ourselves, but for now it'll work fine. So what have we just done? Well, we created an animation in Blender. We created an animator in Unity, and we set it up with our animation. That's why he's standing in that neutral pose. Then we turned on the IK pass for the layer. This part here. That let us create a script. And the script allowed us to find our animator and tell it, in this particular function name, to look at a specific spot. Now, none of this is complicated. Uh, it was like six lines of code and, uh, you know, dragging and dropping one object onto another. 
but it is stuff that's hard to track down if you've never done it before. You'd look up each piece individually and you'd be like, how do I create an animation in Blender? Okay. How do I then transmit that into Unity? And how do I and you gotta look up each of those things individually and none of them ever refer to any of the other pieces. So I thought I'd put them all in one spot where it would be easy to find them uh, and easy to understand the basic pipeline. Uh, if you can't understand this, please let me know because I created it specifically to be understood. Um, and I kind of rambled in the middle, and I hope that didn't break it. I hope that didn't make uh, make you lose the uh, the chain of thought. So have a good one, and in the next episode, we'll talk about eyeballs.